Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest Railroad. Well, we're back in Bob's shop, and, well, Bob looks like he shrunk a little bit, but that's, there, that's just because of the camera. Anyway, in model engineering, things don't always go exactly as they're planned. Well, that's our topic, so I hope you can join us. <laughs> Well, we're working on the Chloe that Bob's trying to restore, so let's get right to the issue at hand. Hello, so welcome back to my shop, courtesy of Stan. And what we're going to look at today is going to be a slight challenge that many of us in this scale happen to have. When you're machining your parts, and this is a part, and this is an axle, the second axle of two on the Chloe, it happens to have some eccentric cams that operate the valve gear. The interest in today's dialogue is what we're doing with these ends of the axle. Turns out that this uh, axle is just a piece of simple bar stock that's machined uh, with the axle uh, ends on it, which is a, a key and carefully measured diameters. And that's where the trouble gets in. We carefully measure the diameter so it carefully fits in this hole. And it's supposed to slide in with a hydraulic press pushing it not with my hand pressure. So obviously it's going to be a little loose. Now, the beauty of that is, is that a company called Henkel in Germany has made a product called Loctite. You're all familiar with that perhaps. And this is Loctite 680. So in this instance we're going to apply Loctite 680 which is used for bearing uh, securement and just apply it to the inside of this bore, push the whole thing together, both wheels obviously, put the keys in there, and what is called a Dutchman. And we're going to have to have a close-up for you to see what that actually is. It's an additional, separate, generally a piece of ground bar stock, but in this instance the original builder used a set screw. So we'll show you how he has that set up as we make the assembly process. All right, so we were talking about this Dutchman, and in general speaking it's just a simple piece of brown bar stock that's inserted into a hole that's drilled on the exact perimeter of the uh, axle hub joint. So it half the holes in the axle and half the holes in the wheel. And that generally is adequate for simple applications. Now in the case of our locomotives we have a lot of torque and load so we we'll use an eighth inch key in the end of the axle. But in this instance the original Chloe owner obviously noticed that his wheels were not tight and so he added this Dutchman, which you'll see it in a close-up here shortly, is actually a tiny set screw with a tiny Allen wrench, and that set screw and Allen wrench gets inserted into the edge of that joint between the axle and the hub and threaded down. So that's a tapped hole that this set screw sets into. And it goes in and it keeps this assembly from pulling apart, as you're seeing here. I can't pull that apart in this instance because that set screw holds both half a hole in each of these items. So that screw has to be removed before these could be separated. Well, Bob, now let me ask, was this something that you had planned to do or that you discovered the need for this along the way? Oh no, here's the best part. So, I'm going to take the rods off and I'm going to paint and make them beautiful. A beautiful job on the side rods and main rods and I'd be done. Well, lo and behold, I discover the axles are loose on the wheels. So that makes the whole program far more challenging. Now we did an episode where we talked about uh, timing. Were these loose enough to affect the timing or just to be no, annoying? they weren't quite loose enough to affect the timing. The key that's in here, this tiny little square key, was enough locking in place to maintain the level of precision that we're looking for. But in long-term day-to-day operations of your locomotive, that would eventually begin to wear the keyhole as that rocks back and forth on the axle, both rotating in those directions, and begin to wear things out. So we were right at the point where we were at that time where I can just salvage the task with the 680 uh, bonding adhesive, and we're going to go ahead and demonstrate to you how we go that here, uh, do that shortly here. The wonders of chemistry. All right, so what we've got here is a little lacquer thinner in my, in my storage jar. And we're going to take a Q-tip at this point, and we're just going to go in here and we're going to clean the bore of this 
wheel. And we're doing that because I don't want any contaminants, oil or greases, in this uh, bonding surface-to-surface -surface environment. The axle has been greased and oiled, and that's been stripped off when I painted it to make it ready for paint. But you just, you just don't want to take a chance on that, that material loosening. So that takes care of that. Let me get another one of my Q-tips, famous Q-tips, because we're going to do the same thing to this end. Now, Bob, we've, I can't remember if we've talked about this before or not, but the Loctite products are not simply an adhesive like most of us think of. It has to do with exposure to oxygen, right? And, that, and that's a triggering you are factor. You're absolutely correct, Stan, and that is the key to the Loctite process, is that the Loctite is an anaerobic compound, which means that it's happiest when there's no air around it. So it sets up under those conditions when air is excluded. So when we have this nice tight sliding fit that we're looking at, we uh, realize that that fit is tight enough that it excludes air. It has a tendency to keep the air out of contact with it, and so by doing so, we allow that product to set up, to harden. So in a sense, I'm using a glue that hardens when I keep the air out away from it. And I keep the air away from it by the fact that this is a sliding tight fit. So the beauty of that is that the air molecules are not terribly uh, interested in squeezing between the shaft of the axle and the inner bore of this hub. So once again, we're just cleaning that, making sure that there is no residual uh, from the painting process or anything else going on here so that I can have that chemical bond and the anaerobic action at the same time. Well, dumb question number 10. Why doesn't the Loctite simply harden in the bottle when you put the cap ah, on it? Because the clever people at Henkel decided that they would put a long tip on this. And in the end of that tip, there is a tiny hole. And in that tiny hole, you have a capacity of air to be trapped on top of the liquid that's in the bottle. So when you put the cap on, it seals the liquid in, but it contains air above it. And by having air on top of that liquid, it never sets. Well, that's enough to keep it from setting. That okay. is indeed. All right, so. Chemistry is cool. That's a handy deal to know. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and identify which axle uh, end goes with which wheel. And of course I had the good judgment to have pre-stamped these so that I know that that's right and that's left. Yes, I notice a, a lack of masking tape. <laughs> that's because I'm going to do this with this. And we're going to once again, we said that was left. That's a left. And that's a right. And why do you do that? Because I'm an idiot. And putting it on backwards and letting it harden is a big, big problem because now you've got to press it off where you could slide it together to get it off. Once it loosens, uh, tightens, you have to uh, use a hydraulic press and pry it off. So, so measure twice and glue once. That's exactly right. So let's take a look at this. We've got a tiny stamp on the end that says L. This is an R. This is an L. These pieces are going to go together. Those of us who work in the shop are very familiar with labeling things. I mean, it's so important. It doesn't, you can be the smartest guy in the world, but get distracted with a bunch of parts that all look alike. It's just better to label things. Okay, right, left rear axle. This becomes the Deadman for that installation, and this becomes the key. So, Theoretically, all I need to do now is apply this. Now, this product stays active for a while. Um, it, usually it's recommended to sit overnight to get the full hardness, so there is working time with it. So it's not like you have to put it on like instant glue and you got to be really quick. You have time to take a, a look at it and make sure that all the pieces are fitting. So we're going to shake this up because Loctite products usually require you to shake them slightly. And then we're going to apply a reasonably heavy coating around uh, the uh, shaft of the axle itself. I won't try and get into the bore because I can wipe my finger around this and pretty much ensure that it gets a uniform coating. 
One last thing about the Loctite products. If you haven't used them before, you just can't grab any old red bottle that says Loctite on it. They're numbered numerically by their intended application, and so the number is is extremely specific. Ah, uh, and uh, and it, going to the Loctite website will yield a tremendous number of products from Henkel, which are used for securing everything in the world under all conditions. Okay, so here we go. I'm not loctiting the key because I really want the key to uh, be removable if the wheel ever has to be taken apart. We don't really want to secure it that tightly. So now we're going to put the key in. Boy, I gotta say, with that green Loctite and the red bottle, I'm just ooh, feeling all Christmassy. <laughs> Please. <laughs> all right. And now we're going to put the Dutchman in. So that went on the opposite side of the little key that went in. Yes. And that I don't know that that's an essential element of it, but it doesn't hurt to have that whole thing. And then we'll do the same thing to the other side. This time I'm not so worried about getting the uh, wheels confused because one's already installed. And since there's only one key slot, that's right. I you can't, can't get you can't get the wheel on 180 off. Well, I could, I could, I could certainly try that, but I don't suspect that it's going to be yield a lot of success. Again. Hope you're going to wash up before lunch. <laughs> yes. Yes, we are. I still remember as a kid being uh, lectured by my grandmother about how the towels in the bathroom were not for cleaning your hands, they were simply for drying them off. Your grandmother was a very wise woman. All right, and then once more we'll put the dead men in. Assuming I can find the right end. Now, normally you don't use a deadman. Your uh, key should be tight enough, the press fit should be tight enough. The tolerance on press fits on this small an axle diameter probably would be within a thousandth to two thousandths of an interference fit. So, that's being said, now let's take a look at this and make sure that we're all happy. Well, la -de da we're perfect. So the spacing and gauge is correct, the uh, adhesive it now has to set overnight and if we've done everything right we should have tight wheels uh, at the end of that process. Wow that's fantastic. Bob I want to thank you so much for explaining everything to us. We're gonna you know, just do a little muscle training here and uh, just want to thank you all for joining us. Stay tuned we'll have more Chloe updates coming soon. Join us next time right here on the Closing